If you've spent any time looking on the internet about home theater systems in the last couple of years, you've probably heard about something called Atmos or Dolby Atmos. And many of you may not understand what it is or if you should even bother. Is it something that you're going to want? And, you know, is it complicated? Is it expensive? What do I have to do to get it? And what's it going to actually benefit me? Well, Dolby Atmos is the next and newest technology in a long line of Dolby home cinema or home surround formats. It started off with the original Dolby Surround, then we had Dolby ProLogic, ProLogic 2, Dolby Digital, Dolby Digital Plus, et cetera, et cetera, and many variants on those different versions. Dolby Atmos is the latest in that, in that line, but it's a wholesale shift. It's a brand new way and concept of thinking about how to use multiple loudspeaker sources and channels to recreate sounds in positions within space. So what do I mean by that? Well, everything that came before Dolby Atmos was channel assigned, which meant that, you know, depending on how sophisticated the particular algorithm was or the technology, the computer brain power used to say, how do I put this sound here or there, was assigned based on the number of channels. And the earliest systems, if we go back, let's say, to Dolby ProLogic, was maybe a 5.1 system. And that 5.1 represented the five main speaker channels, front, left, center, right, and surround, left and right. The point one meant an LFE, or low frequency, channel dedicated for a subwoofer. Now there are variations on these. You could have a 7.1 where you added uh, side channels to the rear surround channels. It could be 7.2 or you have two subwoofers doing the work of one. But basically these channel assigned systems meant that the algorithms could steer things between the channels and you could do very effective things like have something sound like it's coming out of the television screen and fly past your ears and behind you. But one thing that these channel assigned Dolby systems never could do properly was give the sense of height. Now, there were some extensions that added height channels, but I'll caution you, before Atmos, those height channels were still part of this channel assigned realm. So what's new with Atmos? Well, Atmos now has sophisticated computer power, thanks to, you know, computers, smaller, cheaper, everybody knows how many things their cell phone can do, which means that we can do something instead of channel assignment, Dolby's come up with what they call object-based audio assignment. They figured out a way with these complex algorithms and the multiple speaker channels that go into the Atmos system to be able to create a sound object, a virtual sound source anywhere in spherical space. So things don't just necessarily come from above you in terms of where the sound appears to be coming from. It could be above and to the right. It could be right beside you and above. It could be down near the floor. So this is a huge shift in the way that these systems work. And it's a big, big benefit in terms of the immersive quality. Now, Atmos has been around long enough now that even inexpensive AVRs or audio video receivers tend to have Atmos capability built into them. What they don't necessarily have is the number of amplifier channels you need. So what you'll find is that a lot of Atmos enabled AVRs that can actually do the decoding and do all of this digital mapping don't have enough power amplifiers to drive all the speakers necessary. So let's talk about for a second, what do I need in terms of speakers? Well, it's actually not that much more complex than your existing home theater system or multi-channel system should you have one. If we take a basic 5.1 
system. The minimum Dolby Atmos assignment would be 5.1.2. So notice that we've taken the five main channels that we had before, plus the 0.1 for the subwoofer channel, and now we've added a 0.2 behind it. Well, that 0.2, that two channels, are the Atmos channels. And these are what's important for giving you not only these height effects, but the immersive sound field that Atmos is capable of. Now, the minimal requirement for any Atmos system is two additional channels. Whether you have a 5.1 or a 7.1 or a 7.2, you need two additional channels. The better spec, what Dolby will recommend, is four additional channels rather than the two. So you'll have 5.1.4 or 7.2.4. Now, what are these speakers and where do they go, these extra speakers? Because I already have, if I have a 7.2 system, I have a lot of speakers already in the room. Well, we need something to help with the height and the immersive sound with Atmos. Atmos specification has something called an Atmos enabled speaker. This is a Dolby licensed speaker. You've probably seen them if you've looked online at all about Atmos. They're kind of wedge shaped and they're meant to sit on top of either your front left and right main speakers or the front left and right and the rear left and right should you have you know, bookshelf or floor standing speakers behind you in your surround setup. Now, they're doing some interesting things with these licensed speakers with trying to fake height space along with bouncing the sound off the ceiling. Frankly, I'm not a fan of this technology. I think that it messes up the sound quality of your main speakers that you've stuck these things on top of. And I personally would recommend against them. I mean, if that's all that you can achieve, if it's the only place you have space, obviously, by all means, go ahead and do it. I would just recommend an alternative uh, to that. And the alternative is actually putting speakers above you. So in ceiling speakers, like our M3 in ceiling here, is perfect for this application. It's unobtrusive. It doesn't look like you've added a whole bunch more stuff to the system. And whether you add two or four, it's not actually a big aesthetic impact on your, on your home theater room. They're actually quite you know, small, usually easy to install, but you do have to run some wiring. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, there are going to be some applications where either you absolutely cannot install anything on the ceiling. I'm thinking some, you know, lofts or modern construction where it's concrete or whatever. Or you just don't have the ability to cut holes in the ceiling. So in that case, you can take, you know, a dedicated on-wall speaker. I've got an Axiom M3 on-wall here. And using a special bracket, you can actually either hang them off the ceiling, if you can mount to the ceiling, but you can't cut holes in the ceiling, or you can just simply mount them right up near the ceiling, angled downwards towards the listening position. Either of these options are going to provide much better performance than these Atmos-enabled wedge speakers sitting on your front left and right. Now, one note, if you are interested in, in one of the Axiom on-wall speakers and mounting them like that, it's a custom order. We build it with special threaded inserts to work with our full metal bracket. But you can call us and ask for that. Say, I want the, the wall mount or the ceiling mount version of whatever model you're looking at, and we can build it that way for you rather than the normal bracket method where these speakers set flush against the wall. So we've talked about the speakers, we've talked a little bit about the receiver, but we haven't talked about the amplifier yet. So some of the higher end AVRs that are Atmos enabled have 11 amplifier channels built into them. So you can do a full 7.1.4 or 7.2.4. You've got the seven channels plus the four Atmos channels gives you your 11 channels. Subwoofers normally have the amplifiers built in, but the outputs are there 
from the receiver. Like I mentioned, some of the more inexpensive Atmos enabled receivers don't have enough amp channels, so they'll have preamp outputs for those extra Atmos channels. So you have to look at an external power amplifier. Now, like anything else in modern multi-channel systems, there is a real base in all of these channels and the power handling requirements, while they might not be equal to the front, left, center, right configuration, you still want to give an adequate amount of amplifier panel power. So if you have one of these amplifier receivers that you have to add an external amp to, it should be at least as powerful as the built-in power that's on the channels within the receiver. So I hope that that's cleared up a few things about what is Atmos, why do I want it? It's something to seriously look at if you're looking to do an upgrade to your existing system because there's more and more material, both movies and music, that are available in the Atmos encoded in format. So if you can, I highly recommend looking at upgrading your system and checking out a new level of surround performance. Thank you.